Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. I thought it'd be a really cool thing to go back and look through some of the animals that I've produced and pick my favorite holdbacks for a given species. This week it's gonna be Borneo short-tailed pythons. So these are gonna be my top five Borneo short-tailed pythons that I've produced that I like. I might even cheat, there might be a six. You'll have to stay tuned and check that out. Before we dive in, just wanted to show you guys, got the new design in here. Uh, for Mr. Atlas, speaking of Borneo short tail pythons, I'm a little fat, so it'll probably look better on you. Uh, but you can get this merchandise and all different stuff. We got coasters, uh, stickers that I have available here. Uh, you can also get stickers on the site, as well as shirts like this. I think the design came out really great. It's got his name on it here, my stuff, my logo, awesome snake. You know, like I said, it'll look better on you. So go check that out. Link will be in the description. And now stay tuned for my favorite holdback Borneos. So to start the list, Numero Cinco, who at one point was one of my favorites, and he still is one of my favorites, but sometimes you just produce other things you like better, is Mr. Orion. Now, Mr. Orion's got a little bit of stuck shed here I've got to contend with. Uh, we're just coming out of winter, so this is like that time of year that the dead of winter is easy, but when the humidity starts spiking up and down constantly is when it's tough. So just into the beginning of spring and just in like late fall, early winter, uh, it gets a little bit adventurous trying to keep everything balanced and everybody's shedding good. Uh, so we'll get him fixed up. Um, you know, it's not a massive amount, but he's got a, got a strip down there on his back. Uh, his father was notorious for that during breeding season, but um, he, uh, he isn't as bad typically as his dad was in the past. He still focuses on his task at hand, which is shedding when it's time. His dad used to shed off his head and part and then say, okay, it's time to make more babies again. Get me out of here. I'm ready. But yeah, so Orion's really awesome. He is from uh, spot on to Electra. He is also the father of uh, one of the babies on this list. And he is siblings to some of the others. So there's a lot going on with my sideswipe line that I just really like. So I have a lot of holdbacks from it that I really like. Uh, also, in the comment section, I need your guys' help for a future video uh, to do with Bloods and Short Tails. So if you can, hop down into the comments, whether it be at the end of this video or now while you're thinking of it, and I want you to um, you know, note that it's for the future video and give me your best blood or short tail python question that you would like a breeder or keeper of these animals to answer. And I'm putting together a video for you guys that's going to answer those questions in a fun format. So uh, if you get a chance, please go ahead and do that uh, and enjoy Orion here. And we will move on to the number four holdback. So we're talking holdbacks that I really like, Borneo short tail pythons. So what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna show you a bonus one because this is an animal that I produced that I would have held back, but it was in a joint project and I did not have the first selection. So right up here, you can see one of my favorite animals that I produced, didn't quite work. Up here, you can see an animal that I produced with Rob. Uh, it was Rob's female, my male, uh, Holy shit, I'm blanking. Um, the, uh, the ocelots, which I sold the ocelot to Jeremy now, and Rob's female is still here breeding. Um, but that cyclone, as Rob calls it, is one of the favorite snakes that I've ever produced. So had I had the opportunity to keep it, I would have, but he had the first pick and we both knew the moment that snake hatched, which snake was going first, and it did. So along those lines, this is my number four favorite uh, holdback uh, that I've produced. And technically speaking, Rob produced this one uh, because this was my male to his female. This is one of the marble girls that you guys have seen, especially if you've been on the live streams. Really nice orange head, gorgeous pinks at the side, which if I can get her to turn this way especially, 
Um, it's really hard to capture in this lighting. They never want to go the way you want them to. Just an amazing little snake that I really enjoy a great deal. Uh, she is spectacular. Great marbling, great dorsal pattern and contrast. There's just absolutely so many things to like and so many things to do with this little girl. She's got a great personality, as you can see, I'm sure. Uh, you know, even though she's like, what the hell, I was just relaxing. She's still very curious about everything around her. Uh, she's very easygoing, really, really gorgeous animal that I can't wait to plug into projects and try to really take the marble thing to the next level in my collection. Uh, and hopefully Rob and I will get another clutch from this girl's mother this year, although so far, no signs. But look at the spectacular marbling on this. I know some of you guys have seen this girl, and she did have a Meet the Collection on here, of course, but just what a fantastic animal. Um, I feel blessed for just about every snake that I've hatched out, um, but these were really cool, and I obviously didn't technically hatch this one out. Rob did, so this is kind of kind of on here. Uh, that's probably why she's at number four. I'd probably have her a little bit higher if I had hatched her myself. So even though she is one of my holdbacks, um, she kind of comes with a little bit of an asterisk. So let's check out another one. So tied in our third place spot here, we have a pair of sisters. Now Callisto is covered in substrate right now. She was burrowed and I dug her out for this video. So she is... Uh, you know, looking to speak with the manager if she can at this point in time. But she's, excuse me, such a wonderful girl, so she's handling it well. But she was nice and burrowed, and I opened her cage up, and she said, what the hell are you doing in here, man? You know, I'm happy. But she's a beautiful girl with beautiful yellows, which are getting really washed out in the lighting. But you guys could check out, um, I think the Enjoying Our Animals episode with her might be the one where you can really see her well uh, in the sunlight and see how yellow she is. It's a little too cold to be outside today. Now she is siblings with Orion and Astra, obviously. So she is from Spot On and Electra, and her high color really comes from her mother's side. Uh, comes from Electra, but Spot On sometimes through some lighter colored offspring as well. Uh, even with a darker female like Lilith, sometimes I'll get some lighter offspring from that line. But just an incredible animal, one I really enjoy, one that hopefully will be breeding this winter. So stay tuned to see a lot more of Callisto and hopefully some of her babies. I just have to figure out what male I'm gonna put to her. That's the toughest thing for me. Um, I have all these holdbacks and I have directions in my mind. And sometimes it's just hard to settle on that perfect male because obviously I breed her to a male, then it's two years again maybe before I breed her. So I have to make sure it's something I really love. Enjoy that substrate stuck on there. Uh, so we'll see the next one. I think by now you guys have figured out that I cheat a lot and I'm gonna cheat again. And I'm gonna get a sixth snake in here by putting a tie with Astra and Callisto. Much like Callisto, Astra's actually kind of dull today in general. Uh, she's still not showing off nicely, but um, normally she can be a lot more yellow. I think she's heading towards a shed cycle. Um, just the way she's dull, her contrast is dull down here. Um, but still, I wanted to grab them out for the video and not, not just use pictures. I wanted to let you guys see these animals. I love spending time with them. Fantastic creature right here. She's just wonderful. Great personality, a lot like her mother. She probably reminds me the most of her mother out of uh, all the snakes I've produced from Electra. Most similar personality, most iffy about strangers, but also one of the most rewarding relationships that I've built with a snake where she's just awesome. I really enjoy hanging out with her. When I bring her outside, she'll go off and do things and then she'll come back over and kind of check me out. And she's just really cool. You see, even right now, she's focused on me paying attention to what I'm doing. She's always very interested, very, very personable animal, but she's an animal that you have to earn her trust. So if you're a stranger and you pick her up, she's not really that personable. She might even not let you pick her up at all, to be honest. Um, it depends on the person and the mood she's in, but she's always fantastic with me and I adore her. So also she is obviously out of Spot On and Electra. And once again, that color comes from mom for the most part. Uh, she has a lot of similar traits to dad as far as some of the contrast goes. Dad didn't quite have the jet black to that lighter color, but she gets she has some traits from him for sure. Um, 
Not much personality wise from him. Most of, she definitely has more of her mother's personality, but she does have some of her father's. Like her father's a busybody, and she definitely gets up and moves around outside quite a bit and checks things out. But none of the babies really periscope quite as much as dad did. He was a big periscoper. Uh, these guys don't tend to do that as much. Um, I'm trying to think. I think Kalis Astra's, Astra's periscoped a few times, but not like dad. Dad was given every single time we went outside, he would periscope. But once again, this is the lovely girl Astra. So of course, no matter what, no matter how much planning you do, there's always a snake that doesn't cooperate. Number two is not cooperating. Now he's not, not cooperating in the sense of he's being bad or whatever, but he's in a shed cycle. And so number two is the guy here on this shirt, Mr. Atlas. So we'll get you, we'll get you down here. You can take a look at that fella. I'll put some pictures up in the screen here, maybe even over here so that you can check out Mr. Atlas. Um, he is awesome. This guy here came from uh, spot on to Lilith. So he has the same mother as the number one snake, but a different father. It's a little hint for those of you that pay attention. Uh, so he is awesome. Looking very, very forward to working with him in the future. And... Uh, seeing what, what we can do with Atlas. Um, he's a side swipe. He has that gray trait that I really like. He has great striping, great personality. Uh, you can check him out. He's got a meet the collection on the channel, as well as I believe he's in an Enjoying Our Animals segment, and I am sure he's popped into another video here or there. Uh, so definitely go check those out. Plus, of course, obviously, we've got them all over merchandise for you guys. Link in the description. Make sure you check out the store. Get yourself something cool, especially my Borneo people. You know, we're always shafted by the blood python people. I happen to be both people. But uh, we got to stand up. We got to show off our Borneos proud. Um, so definitely check that out. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this list. Don't forget to get down into the comments and tell me that it's a question for the future video and shoot me with your best, uh, you know, blood or short tail question and we will try to get most of those answers in a video. It may even turn into a video series where it's part one, part two, part three, depending on how many people. I already have like half a dozen questions people have asked me, but give me something good. Give me something that maybe you, you've always wondered. Give me something that uh, has some substance to it, uh, but ideally something that we can answer in like 30 seconds to two and a half minutes, something in that range so we can, we can do a few things in each video and not get into a, a huge long topic. Let's get on to the next snake. So without further ado, who's gonna be number one? I feel like you guys that have paid attention to the channel knew who this snake was before we even started this list. Uh, but number one is definitely this little fella here. I absolutely love this snake. And the crazy thing is he's my, he's my number one holdback, my favorite Borneo short tail that I've ever produced. And I don't even know genetically what's going on with him. Uh, he has a lot of the qualities that you find in the side swipe animals, but not quite. Uh, he has the genetic striping, which I love. I absolutely love the, the pattern that you see down there, which I also see sometimes in uh, some of the ocelot stuff, in some of the uh, side swipe stuff, different places, different lines that kind of pop up a similar look to that. And then just that gray coloration uh, that you see sometimes in ultra type animals or ghost line animals. And then that seems to come in heavy from his mother. Now this guy was produced from Lilith and Orion. And uh, Orion was one of my favorite snakes when I hatched him. He's still one of my favorite animals and near and dear to my heart. But uh, you know, this little guy definitely supplanted him for sure. Um, and don't tell Orion that I don't want to hurt his feelings, but this guy is incredible. And he also has some really cool pinks along the sides of his face, which I don't think are going to show up. Let me see if I can get him to turn around here for a minute. Of course not. Let me try and just distract him a little. Oh, man, you can't see those pinks on here. It's just so nice. Absolute color explosion on these animals. Borneo short tails are one of those things, if you don't see them in person, you probably don't have a full appreciation for how handsome this fella is 
or how nice Borneos are in, in, in general. I think a lot of people have this perception that they're just brown snakes and uh, they're anything but. They're absolutely vibrant in person. The contrast and the colors. I mean, look at those yellows on this side there. And it's it's hard to see in this lighting, but that yellow to gray contrast. And then you do have the brown up top that goes into a creamy color down there that just melts into that white and black. And I mean, the tail has like yellow, neon yellow striping along there, which I am certain is not gonna show up. It's so hard to put them in position. Like you can kind of see the yellow there a little bit, but it's not as neon. And it's so neon yellow that it's almost green. It's really funky. And I see that in some of my skunk line girls as well. Um, there's a lot of Borneos where you get that, but this guy, favorite Borneo that I've produced to date, and he's gonna be really hard to outdo him. Hopefully his kids outdo him the way that Orion was outdone by him. Uh, that would be a blessing. I will still always have a special place in my heart for both of them, but uh, just imagine where this can go in the future. So I can't wait for another couple of years when he's ready to make babies of his own. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit the comment section. Um, and make sure that you uh, follow along on these projects and see where this stuff goes. Uh, so let me know what you think. And we'll see you next time.